Anacortes is a little city where 8,000 people live, work, and play. Located comfortably on the northern seven and one-half square miles of Fidalgo Island, the town is connected to the mainland by two bridges. The remainder of the small island provides farmland and a scenic playground. Fidalgo is one of the San Juan Island group. Located in the northwest corner of the state of Washington, as the crow flies about 80 miles north of Seattle and 100 miles south of Vancouver, British Columbia. The city boasts the usual facilities found in most American communities, shopping areas, high school, elementary schools, and so forth. In our case, the schools house about 2,400 young people each year. Shops and services are modern and convenient. As one local bank says, we are small enough to know you, yet large enough to serve your needs. Surrounded as it is by water, it is only natural that boating plays an important role in Anacortes. Modern marinas provide space for over 1,000 commercial and pleasure boats. A Coast Guard cutter is stationed here year-round. There are adequate facilities for repair and upkeep for boats of all sizes. Ocean-going ships from around the world call it Anacortes, one of the deep water ports of the Puget Sound region. Shipping is a vital part of the economy of this area. Anacortes boasts an unusual amount of parkland, much of which has been retained in a natural condition. These trail-filled parklands contain several square miles of virgin timber and encompass lakes as well as rocky and sandy beaches. Two modern oil refineries are located on a peninsula just across the bay east of Anacortes. They are the largest employers in the area. What can people do in and around Anacortes? Those who live here and those who come here for vacations engage in a great variety of recreational pursuits, perhaps more varied than could be found in any other single community in the United States. Balmy, sunny summer days and an annual rainfall of 25 inches provide the ingredients for abundant outdoor recreation. Glaciers are seen in abundance in the mountains of the Northwest Mount Shuxon reflects its glaciers in Picture Lake near Mount Baker Lodge.
Mount Rainier from Tipsu Lake is one of the outstanding scenes in the Pacific Northwest. Within two hours' drive of Anacortes are great snow-capped mountains such as Shuxon, Mount Baker, Mount Rainier, and Mount Olympus. Mount Rainier, slightly more than 100 miles away, is the highest mountain in the Pacific Northwest. Hurricane Ridge, a spot of great scenic beauty in the heart of the Olympic National Park, is two hours away by car and ferry. Mount Olympus, the dominant mountain peak in the Olympic National Park, is a real challenge for mountain climbers. As pleasant as these spots are in the summer, there is no scenery as awe-inspiring as Mount Baker in the winter. With 40 to 50 feet of snow clinging to this rugged guardian of the San Juans, the slopes become a paradise for skiers, lasting well into the summer. These slopes face north, thus assuring that almost every day of the skiing season will find nothing but powder snow for the skiers. A long chairlift takes the best skiers to a high ridge where they can come down over one of the longest ski runs found anywhere. There are also slopes and rope toes for beginners. There's plenty of instructors to help the novice learn to negotiate the more challenging run. Wild animals need not be seen only in zoos in the Pacific Northwest. Many are still to be found in abundance in the rugged wilderness areas of the three Washington State National Parks established in the northwestern region surrounding Anacortes and in the thousands of square miles of the rugged Olympic and Cascade Mountains. Deer are especially abundant. Excellent management means hunters are able to get their deer in the fall. Elk are also abundant in the Olympic and Cascade ranges. There are many other animals. Some are not seen often, such as this river otter. These animals inhabit not only mountain streams, but also the salt waters near islands. Perhaps the most characteristic of the large wild animals in the area is the mountain goat. He can be seen by anyone who has ambition to climb to his rugged domain in the Olympic Mountains around the slopes of Mount Baker or other parks of the North Cascades or Mount Rainier National Park. These beautiful animals are common in the North Cascade National Park, but one must hike to find them. They do not come down to the campground for a handout. The San Juan Islands, 172 in number, are one of the most interesting island groups to be found anywhere. The best island view is in the air. The 3,500 foot long Anacortes Airport runway makes it possible to plane throughout the islands. Many islands have small airports for residents or visitors. Here, we see a Washington State ferry on its way to the San Juan Islands for a trip on to Vancouver Island in British Columbia. We look down upon one of our two large modern marinas. Looking south, you can see the highest point on Fidalgo Island, 1,300 foot Mount Erie, with a natural park at the top from which an outstanding view of the surrounding island areas, as well as the Olympic and Cascade Mountains is possible. Beaches are everywhere. Alexander Beach is an outstanding example. West Beach, part of Deception Pass State Park is one of the most popular tourist stops with camping and picnicking facilities which are unequal. 
Deception Pass, a narrow channel between Fidalgo and Whidbey Island, provides a passage for boats, which, as the name implies, is swift and in some situations dangerous. The vast area on both borders of this pass form the famous, most visited Deception Pass State Park. Bowman's Bay, situated within the park, is a favorite anchorage for visiting boats in addition to commercial fishermen who tie up here for the night during fishing season. Rosario Beach is a favorite picnic area, with its log-strewn beach sands and the location of Walla Walla College Biological Station. The state of Washington owns many of the islands in the San Juan and made state parks for the boaters. Susha Island, one of the favorite spots in all the islands, is the site of one of the largest of these boating state parks. There are hundreds of quiet bays where one can anchor for hours without seeing anyone else. There are dozens of secluded beaches where no one is walking or bathing or camping. Most of these islands are uninhabited. They provide much wilderness area for those who like to get away from it all. And there are also resorts for those who prefer more social surroundings. Some of these cater to the Northwest boating population and are called Botels. Boating is indeed the greatest recreational pursuit in the Anacortes area. Everywhere, things seem to be geared to life on the water. And well, they should be when there is so much water and so many islands to explore. Sailboats are common, adding beauty to the boating scene. to see a Coast Guard station now and then, for you realize that should you meet with an accident or other trouble while boating, help is near at hand. place in the San Juan Island like Fossil Bay at Susha Island. There is a state park just for boaters. Docks and floats are provided where you can tie up. Many facilities for picnicking on shore, shady tables, fireplaces, water and trails to secluded spots are provided. Places where you can roll out a sleeping bag on a high bluff under the red bark madrona trees and go to sleep with the stars overhead and the waves dashing on the rocks below. Fishing dominates in the lives of many Anacortes people and the continuous flow of visitors who come here each year. It's a great place for salmon fishing and salmon derbies are held annually throughout the area. Some big ones can weigh up to 50 pounds. Bottom fish such as cod and halibut can also be caught year round. commercial fishing goes on mainly in the summer and fall. Most of this type salmon fishing is with pursanes and gill nets. Pursanes are large purse-like nets that are placed in a huge circle from a large fishing boat. One side drops low in the water while the other remains on the surface. When a good catch of fish appears to be within the area of the net, the net is pulled in as one would pull the drawstrings of an old-fashioned purse. The net becomes a bag with fish inside if the net was in the right location. Hundreds of boats work all summer at this, while local canneries process the salmon thus caught. Smaller boats work primarily at night with gill nets, so salmon is caught around the clock, with pursainers working in the daylight hours and the gill netters at night. From the days of Paul Bunyan, logging and its accompanying wood products industries have been a major part of the economy of this area, Almost any day of the year, 
huge log booms can be seen being guided over the water by tugboats, small but mighty, en route to the wood products industries in our area. A plywood mill and pulp mill are the nucleus of this industry in the Anacortes area. Many beautiful beaches dot this area. Huge logs have washed ashore through the years, making Rosario Beach one of the favorites. Walking along the beach means hours of fun for driftwood collectors, rock hounds, and beachcombers. Beaches here are seldom crowded. From the top of 1,300-foot Mount Erie on Fidalgo Island, one gets a commanding view of the islands, lakes, and ocean waters of this vast region. It is like a view from a plain, but your feet are on solid ground. Deception Pass is a spectacular sight from the bridge connecting Fidalgo and Whidbey Islands. West Beach, a long stretch of white sand, is one of the most popular spots in the surrounding parklands. Large crowds seldom are seen here. A small boy can play safely alone on this beach and lose himself in his thoughts and in the sand. What better place can Dad choose to introduce the world and all its wonders in it to his youngster? large waves never threaten, and castles in the sand can be the most important enterprise in the world. Diving is popular among the San Juan Islands. There are tiny rocky islands that teem with underwater life. Because the water is normally quite calm, diving is safer than almost anywhere else on Earth. The variety of life beneath the surface is amazing, offering a paradise for the marine biologist. Here the diver has brought up a lot of marine animals. Let's take a look at some of them. Here are some starfish. This is the leather star. Here's the sun star, so-called because of its many arms like rays of the sun. This is a jelly star, one of the soft kinds. This is a giant sun star that has become five feet in diameter. And this is a hermit crab making his home inside a discarded shell of some shellfish. The squid is not often seen where he stays in deep water, but he is a relative of the octopus. And this beautiful creature is known as a nudibranch. 
It is really a sea snail without a shell. It is one of the most interesting creatures in these waters. San Juan Island beaches have long been a treasure trove for the collectors of driftwood and rock. In these inland waters, waves never reach the proportions that they do along the open sea. Surrounding mountains and islands protect the water from open sea violence. Occasional storms can bring excitement to the generally calm shores. Some people have built homes on the beaches, but mostly the beaches are free for all to enjoy. Anacortes has a modern 18-hole golf course in a beautiful location where the game can be enjoyed year-round. Anacortes looks forward yearly to its Arts and Crafts Festival, which has been held in early August since the early 1960s. This unique celebration brings together the artists of all ages and abilities. Budding artists, still in the lower grades, display their handiwork in an extensive area of the downtown section, which has been marked off just for the display. Mature artists from all the surrounding communities come to Anacortes to display their talents during this time, be it painting, ceramics, pottery, metalwork, or carving. Just about every art form is shown in and during this two-day festival, held the first weekend in August. The natural beauty of the area encourages artistic expression. An outstanding band comes to provide music for a portion of the festival. The celebration attracts visitors from all over the state and from nearby regions in Canada. Although Anacortes boasts certain basic industries which are essential to the economy, it has been realized that additional opportunities need to be found. With this need in mind, over 100 acres have been cleared and developed for an industrial park. With road and rail service, this area is also located on the water to take advantage of the historic orientation of Anacortes toward the sea. To make this area particularly attractive, roads and utilities have been provided. Hopefully, the advantages of living in the area plus the multiplicity of industrial opportunities will lure small industry or corporate offices to this development. A good place to live, work, and play, and the necessary jobs to make it possible. This would be an ideal balance. Anacortes, part of the island empire, is a wonderful place to live. It provides an ideal center from which to enjoy the high mountains of the Olympics and Cascade Ranges, or to take a ferry to Victoria on Vancouver Island, a unique city providing a little bit of old England. Three great national parks are within a two-hour drive, with opportunities for boating, 
fishing, mountain climbing, skiing, golf, and a host of other outdoor pursuits, it is no wonder that many people would live nowhere else and that everyone wants to visit this land of scenic beauty. <laughs>